Well, financial decisions you make in your 20s can have a pretty big impact down the line. And getting started, uh, it can be overwhelming. So what should you be t thinking about? What should you be prioritizing in those younger years of your life? That is the focus of today's Your Money Month segment. And we're joined by Julie Sabaris. She's the head of wealth planning and practice management with Manulife. Julie, thanks so much for coming in again. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So this is really interesting. We're going to delve into sort of each decade decade each week, starting off with your 20s, uh, because you're finally making some money, hopefully, in your 20s. Um, but there's some competing priorities here. You've got uh, school to worry about, perhaps. Maybe you're still in school, or maybe you have a student loan to worry about. How do you even just start off, um, you know, if you're thinking about getting started of, uh, you know, a financial plan or something along those lines when you're in your 20s? So when you want to start investing, really what you want to do is pay yourself first. So funds might be a little tight, but even a little bit matters. You have time on your side, which is a really good thing when it comes to investing. And so paying yourself first essentially means either maybe having it taken off your paycheck, if you have some employer savings plans available to you where they can do that, or set it up so it comes directly out of your bank account, regular intervals, every month, every you know two weeks when you're getting paid, whatever makes the most sense to you so that you're making that happen. If you wait to see what you have left in your account at the end of the month to save that, chances are you're not setting yourself up for success. Yeah. And so you really just need to get those savings going. And really a nominal amount is all you need to get going. So, you know, don't think that you need these large sums of money to start investing. Really under $100 will get you started. And is it partly, I mean, partly on the, the fact that, uh, you know, the compounding interest is your your best friend kind of thing, but also even just getting in the habit of it is important or or learning the ropes of it, trying to see what you can do and, and, and where is, is all important. Absolutely, and, and riding out the ups and downs of the markets too, yeah. you know, t when time is on your side. Now you may have some priorities where time is not on your side. So you do wanna look at investments that are appropriate for the timeline that you have available to you. So if some of your savings goals are just a couple of years out, you want to look at investments that are appropriate for that timeline as well. So you're thinking buying a house or something buying like that. Buying a house, that. getting married, yeah. uh, traveling, having children, taking a maternity leave, a paternity leave, needing to top up some of those funds. You have a lot going on um, at that age, of sort of the, the 20s. Mm -hmm. I think one of the big questions I had at that time was, what should I be paying off my student loan or putting money in you know, whatever account, whether it's an RSP or a TFSA? Say because you know you you know the acronyms at least probably by by that point, but it, it's kind of unclear. Do I want to pay down that debt or do I want to start putting stuff away? What, what would you advise? The answer is always it depends. Okay, and so it's going to come down to what's most important to you. Now there's some people that can't sleep at night knowing that they have some debt, and it may be more important to them to start to pay that off sooner uh, than saving. But some other quali uh, quantitative factors that you might want to take a look at is what is the potential rate of return that you're going to get on those investments. And how does that compare to the um, interest rate that you're paying on that debt? And it may make more sense to invest, but don't forget about maybe some other things that come along with that debt, such as student loans, where you may have um, some tax benefits available to you for those student loans. So you want to factor that into your calculation as well um, as to what, what makes the most sense for you. When you're in that um, time of your life too, uh, when you're thinking about those 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 accounts, those are RSP or a TFSA, um, if you have a lower income, what account should you be gravitating toward? That TFSA has so much flexibility, mm. and I think it's going to be really ideal for a lot of people in their 20s. The RSP savings is really going to be for uh, retirement savings, and then you have $35,000 available to you for that first-time home buyer's withdrawal, so you may decide to put some into your RSP for that. But if that is not the purpose of your funds, that TFSA is so flexible as uh, so you start accumulating contribution room as soon as you turn 18, and if you make a withdrawal, you restore the contribution the following uh, calendar year, and you're not going to pay tax on the money that you're going to earn and 
everybody likes not paying tax. Yeah. Well, and then there's this other new account, um, the the first home savings account. Um, I think I've got the the letters there, <laughs> right? Um, but the FHSA. Um, so, I mean, that's a big one too for for young Huge people win. to consider. Huge win. So get it open and start accumulating contribution room. So we know that 2023 was the first year that that was available. So even if you don't have a large amount of savings to put in, get it open, start accumulating contribution room. Any contribution room you don't use, you get to carry it forward. And there's really no downside to this FHSA. You can keep this open for a maximum of 15 years. And if you don't end up purchasing a home, you can move that into your RSP without affecting your RSP contribution room. So I would suggest if there's any a desire to purchase a home at some point in the next 15 years for somebody in their 20s, get that F FHSA open and start um, accumulating contribution room at a minimum and make any contribution that you can to it. And again, when time is on your side, those funds are going to accumulate and compound over time. Give it a couple of years and it's going to roll off of our tongues uh, easier <laughs> that one because <laughs> the other ones do at this point. Um, so, you know, when when you're sort of progressing through your 20s, maybe you're you're getting a promotion here or there and, and sort of working your way up. You might get a bit of a raise. What do you advise people do when when that happens? They're they're You know, they're, there's more money in their pocket, um, more options, perhaps. Give yourself, give your savings a raise at the same time. So if you tend to get a, a year end raise through your employer, make sure you go to your savings, see how much you're contributing and see how much of a raise you can give to those savings as well. 